Hello Sunday Club, it's Lindsay again with another true story from the Bible. But before we um, think about that, um, let's think about the word authority. If you've been tuning in the last few weeks, you'll know that we've looked at that word and we've um, tried to figure out exactly what it means. So can you remember? Can you remember? Can you think of a, an example how it affects your life? Um, what about when you're at school and if you see somebody misbehave, what might the teacher say about um, going out for play? That person might just have to stay in a little while and miss some of the play or the threat could be there because that's her job or his job to be able to say things like that and be obeyed. And for me, it would be needing to obey uh, the laws when I'm driving and uh, not to go speeding and driving recklessly because a police constable might stop me and um, even arrest me if I've driven so badly because you, you've got to um, keep the laws and he has or she has the authority to uh, enforce that. Got the, um, got the permission to uh, put the laws into practice. So um, today's story is also about authority and we've had um, three previous stories. Can you remember um, the one with that figure in it? That was the man that was lowered down on his mat through the roof of a house and it showed that story showed that Jesus has authority to forgive sins and he forgave that man for all the wrong things he'd done and helped him to just get up and walk again, healed him. And uh, this man had a diseased hand and Jesus healed his hand so he could stretch it out again. And last week we had the story of the boat in the wild weather on the lake and Jesus spoke to the storm, spoke to the, the wind and the waves, told them to be still and they were. So he has the authority over um, sins and disease and nature. So we've got um, another story on that theme today. Let's just remember the memory verse first of all. Can you recall it? Can you remember what it is? It begins with Jesus said. Can you remember? I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And that's in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. So let's have today's true story from the Bible. And it's from uh, the book of Mark, chapter 5. One day, Jesus and his friends arrived at a town and a huge crowd began to gather. Everyone was pushing to get nearer to Jesus, but at the sight of one particular man who was trying to reach him, they all stepped aside. They had recognised Jairus, the president of their synagogue, and their synagogue was like our church a bit. He was a very important man in the town. As the crowd parted, Jairus ran up to Jesus and then dropped down humbly to his knees. Please come quickly, he begged. My daughter is very ill. She will die if you don't come soon. Jesus turned at once and began to follow where Jairus led. The crowd jostled and hurried along with them. Jairus was looking back to make sure that Jesus was close behind when Jesus suddenly stopped and talked to a woman who needed his help. Jesus took his time to help her and heal her. She was overjoyed. She was just as important to God as Jairus, the president of the synagogue. Let's have a look at the next part over the page. While Jesus was giving his whole attention to the woman, there was a stir nearby where Jairus was waiting impatiently. 
Some servants had arrived from Jairus's house. They brought the terrible message that he dreaded to hear. Your daughter has died, they told him. There's no point in bothering Jesus now. Poor Jairus, his heart sank. He had tried so hard to get to Jesus before it was too late. If only Jesus had not stopped to talk to that woman. Surely she could have waited. It was no good now. But at that moment, Jesus turned from watching the woman and put his hand on Jairus' shoulder. Don't be afraid or worried, Jesus said. Go on trusting me. The two of them strode quickly towards Jairus' grand house. People were crying outside, wailing. What is all the noise about? Jesus asked them. The little girl is only sleeping. But they laughed at him. They knew that she was dead. Jesus walked past them into the house. He gave orders that no one was to come into the little girl's room except her parents and Jesus' three close friends, Peter, James and John. Jesus went across to the still, dead figure lying on the mattress. He took the cold hand in his. Get up, little one, he said. And at once... The girl opened her big brown eyes and smiled at him. Then she was out of bed in a moment and hopping about the room in excitement. Tears were streaming down her mother's face. Tears of happiness, I'm sure. Jesus didn't want the girl to be afraid, so he spoke quickly to her parents. Your daughter is feeling hungry. Why not get her something to eat? Hmm. There's another miracle that makes you go, wow. So let's take a look at that scene and imagine what it must have looked like. So here's what the scene might have looked like. The girl is lying there on the bed and poor girl has lost her life and mum and dad there looking extremely sad and Jesus has come and remember he said to Jairus keep on trusting and he brought his three close friends Peter, James and John so there in the scene as well, watching what's going on. So we've got witnesses. And then all Jesus does is he takes her hand and says, get up little girl. It's amazing. It's a massive miracle. She doesn't need that bed anymore. The story says she's actually jumping around the room. She's excited and she's got energy. So she didn't take long to get better. It's not like when we're poorly and um, it takes us days, sometimes weeks to get better. No, it was sudden. It was an absolute miracle. I wonder what everybody felt like. Once she came back to life. I wonder what mum and dad felt like. The story says mum was crying with happiness. I expect the dad felt the same. And what about Peter, James and John? They must have been staggered by what they'd seen. It must have made them all think. Who is this Jesus? Can you remember from the story who Jairus was? He was the president of the synagogue 
and he must have made lots of decisions about what went on in the synagogue. He had authority. What he said goes. And yet he came to Jesus and knelt on his knees at Jesus' feet and begged him to go to his daughter. So what do you think that tells us about Jairus? Hmm, I think he's heard about Jesus. He might have even seen him before and heard some of his teaching. He's probably heard about those previous miracles. And I think he knows that Jesus has authority over things like illness. So why not have authority over death? He puts his trust in Jesus, doesn't he? Some people might say, I wonder if the girl was definitely dead, though. Well, we know that Jairus was a well-off man. He had a grand house. He had a very good job. And so he would have been able to afford a doctor, unlike some people. And so the doctor must have pronounced her dead because, remember, people were outside wailing and crying. And... Apart from that, I think her own mum and dad would know if the life had drained out of that girl. And then when Jesus held her hand, it was cold and yeah, she was dead. So this is a massive, massive miracle. And how did Jesus do it? Just by speaking. And we've thought about that in the other stories and how that's like the very first lines in the Old Testament about God speaking and things come about, you know, let there be light. And there was. So again, all this is pointing to who Jesus is. He is God. Who do you think the, the little girl thought he was after all that had happened to her? What do you think her mom and dad thought about who Jesus is? And what do you think about those three close disciples, Peter, James and John? What do you think they thought? They'd seen one miracle after another. And did it take the girl a long time to recover? No, it was immediate. It was a massive miracle. So what do you think? It's time to make up your mind. Who is Jesus? Well, I think and believe he is God. And you know, that was a very special time in history when there were lots of miracles that were done by Jesus. But now we can pray for people who are ill and sometimes they get better and sometimes sadly they don't. But what we know is that Jesus dearly loves us, the Bible tells us that, and that God really loves us and cares about us. And he's beside us when things get difficult and tough and sad and, you know, when people are ill and they die. But we can pray for sick people. And the wonderful news is that the Bible says Jesus raises us up when we die. To live forever in heaven with him if we love him and follow his teaching now. And who wouldn't want that massive miracle? Well, I do. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for today's true story from the Bible. And thank you for sending your dear son Jesus to teach us and we thank you for raising him up from the dead after he had been put to death for our sins. Lord God, you are amazing. Amen. Well, stay close to the Lord and he will stay close to you and I will have another story for you next week. Bye for now. Hope you have a good week.